There's something about crazy anime chicks that just entertains me beyond belief, and Inka, I would say, is probably one of my favorite Fire Force characters, not because I think she's great on a personal level, I mean, she gets her enjoyment, her thrills, out of basically getting people to give her money, and the more dangerous of the fire, the more she loves it. Like, she literally will be fine letting a house burn a flame so she can get a payment to save a person. But she is insane. She is absolutely batshit insane, but you can't deny she's entertaining. And the cliffhanger that they deliver us with basically the uncertainty of will she be going to the fire soldier's side or will she be basically a crazy cultist member. Honestly, I'm leaning more towards the cultist side just because she loves seeing flames burst alive where with fire soldiers they would want to prevent it from ever happening. She is honestly the biggest coin toss I think the anime has thrown at us to date because if she was a part of our hero side, they could probably prevent most fires. She can literally see the path and see the ignition before it happens, not to mention she has probably my favorite fire ability as she basically can draw the path and ignite a flame. I really hope whether she becomes a full-on antagonist or a protagonist, I really hope they give her a paintbrush. I think that would be the most badass and creative thing ever if she was an artist as she paints the flames. That's just something that I was just like, as soon as I saw the trails and how she would ignite them, I was like, give her a paintbrush, give her a marker, a pencil, give her something because that would be hilarious and a little horrifying depending on the side that she falls on. I think this is just showing why this season of Fire Force is so exciting because even when they give us some pretty insane action, they literally blew a body literally to shreds. I mean, there's been violence, there's been some pretty gruesome stuff, but I wasn't expecting this man to jump aboard and then just obliterate someone before her eyes. Like, that was horrifying beyond belief, but really shows you the stakes that Season 2 of Fire Force is delivering, that it isn't just, hey, everyone can throw fire around and get a bit unharmed. Innocent people, innocent bystanders, and even people who may not be the most righteous of fellows, can end up in a pretty gruesome state that you feel very bad for them and their families, and they definitely delivered on that in this week's episode. I think a lot of times when you have cults or just like the whole idea of like, hey, decide to burn the world aflame like happened 250 years ago, it can feel underwhelming as if, yeah, they're crazy, but you don't really feel like the stakes are all there, because like, really, how are you going to engulf the world in flames? How are you going to turn into a giant star just burning alive? as all the cultist members get eaten alive by these flames. It's kind of like, they just never live up to what they're trying to lay out. But I can honestly say Fire Force is. Even though we haven't seen the most destructive of flames as of yet, we've seen cities be engulfed by flames, we've seen flashbacks, it still feels like the cultist members, and that's what I'm always going to call them, is they're a cult, that's really what they function at, like, they are brainwashed, they are indoctrinated, and it's honestly insanity, it really is, it's absolute insane. And it feels like these people, as silly as they may appear to be with how they interact with each other or some of the lines that they speak, like, when he bursts down and starts talking to Inka, like, you think he's childish, you think he's not really gonna hurt a fly, and then he obliterates someone and is gruesome. Like, it shows you the level of insanity because sometimes the most insane people can blend in with the average Joe. And the way he talks to just random people he just met, it seems like a normal person, Maybe a little hyper, maybe a little unhinged, but he's not gonna, and then you're like, oh shit, he did. This actually feels horrifying as if the end of the world could happen, and that's what makes, I think, the season of Fire Force really stick out even more so than season one, because it actually feels like the stakes are there. The fact that you introduce a character who literally can predict where flames are going to happen before they happen, and has the ability to make a trail of flames, not only that, she can actually predict where people are going to attack her from if they have flame abilities themselves, she is probably the most valuable asset you could have on your team. If she was a part of the Fire Force, she could literally stop fires before they happen. Maybe there's a reverse, like if she sees the trail, I wonder if she could cancel a flame from it, like, happening or something like that. And even if she couldn't, there's this ability that you could probably save a lot more lives than having to wait for it to burst the flame. But if you throw her on the antagonist side, then basically you lose that ability, and also, it's just gonna get all the worse. You could probably start more fires than have been happening. And this girl seemingly is so unhinged, she just wants to be engulfed by flames. She's even more insane than the captain we got introduced to last week, who wants to see the flames, but at the very least, this man wants to stop them. She's the complete reverse, and that's why I don't think it's possible for her to join the Fire Force. I think she's so deranged, the fact that she doesn't want to be taken into custody, it seems to me that if she's going to pick any side, it's probably going to be the crazy cultist, and if she doesn't, I'll eat my words, but... 
I mean, anything's possible in Fire Force, but the more crazy a character is, it just feels like they're going to end up in a crazy cult because, I mean, cult leaders and things like that, they kind of do attract the crazy or they're just very weak-minded because that's how it honestly happens. I think this episode of Fire Force was pretty exciting because it introduced an element that felt so 50-50 that you looked at her and said, oh, she's a normal girl, and then you saw something, you're like, okay, yeah, she's robbing people, right? She's literally forcing them to give them all that they have so that they can be safe. She's not starting the fire, so you see the potential of her being a protagonist. Maybe she's just, you know, she's starving or maybe she needs money or maybe she just had a bad run with the law and she's just not the straightest of kids, right? There's still potential to correct that behavior. But then you see things as the episode starts progressing and she's like conducting an orchestra as if she wants a baton so she can basically summon these flames or so that's how she feels and you're like can you really trust someone like that because if that's in the fire force and you see a flame about to engulf arthur she would be like oh let's do a little dance and then arthur would be burst alive like it just feels like it's insanity and i think fire force needs that insanity you need characters that make you so scared of what they'll do and i think the more normal a character looks and the more insane they actually are the more terrifying it becomes because she for the most part looks like a normal girl and then you see certain sides of her like inside her mind which was some of the most beautiful imagery and horrifying imagery fire force has seen in quite some time but i mean we've had a lot inside either shinra's mind or now inka's mind things like that and it really does get just how brainwashed characters can be and if there was one thing cults are good at it's definitely brainwashing and the fact that she's already this unhinged it would be so easy for her to become one of the most horrifying people we've ever seen in Fire Force, and I'm kind of excited, but also terrified all at the same time. With how different it felt with the flames, they really had to step up their game with the visual production, and I think they did. I really love the idea of the paths and things like that. I love how they portrayed her backstory just being engulfed in flames. She's smiling as people are running for their life, and how she's like, oh, this is so fun because now I can see the past. It just felt like the flames were so different this episode, and the flames have always felt different, don't get me wrong, I've always complimented the fire animation, it always feels unique and distinct from the last, as if the flames have a mind of their own. But there was something about following a character like her for a majority of the episode, and just seeing the flames this time, it was as if we were seeing it from a lunatic's point of view, who as things were exploding around her, she didn't fear death, so it just gave it a different life and energy that made us feel as crazy as she did. And honestly, she stole the episode. I think if we only focused from her point of view and only saw Shinra towards the end of the episode, I still think it would have been a damn close to perfect episode for being as insane as it was, but they did touch upon some interesting character motivations from the Fire Force side. I love the Arthur moment where he actually calls out Shinra like, hey, what would have happened if I wouldn't have been there? It's a pretty serious line because if he wasn't there, Shinra could have killed someone. And I actually like how Shinra owns up to that mistake as if, yeah, my bad and how it then transitions into the traditional Shinra Arthur comedy, like, oh, what happened to Shinra? Did you kidnap him? Like, where is the real Shinra? Because when has he ever done that towards Arthur? And it becomes this kind of comedic kind of de-escalation scene, but still, it rings true what would have happened had Arthur not been there. And it's a scary thought having someone like Shinra, our protagonist, who just wants to stop the flames and prevent what happened to his family happening to anyone else, knowing that he could be brainwashed and actually kill the people that he loves and cherishes right now. It's a scary feeling and really plays into the later half of the episode where we focus on characters like Inka, and we know if a good character like Shinra, one of these pillars, could be brainwashed like that and only just held through because he had good company, what's going to happen to the fifth pillar when she gets brainwashed by this cult? It's insanity and it really lends itself to make the flow feel all the tighter. And then you get characters like, of course, we have our captain just basically not being able to use other companies. Our company is going to have to tackle it alone once again. He's biting his tongue. It just feels like we have to swallow our pride and it feels so isolated and lonely, but it feels like this team is in for it for the long haul. They're willing to give it their all. And that's why when they charge into battle, you don't feel like they're charging into a battle feeling like it's a fool's dream. They feel like they can do it. But even when they feel like they can, we see it from the other side and we're like, can you? We just saw a character get obliterated. Sure, he didn't have abilities, but boy, Shinra could lose an arm. He easily could, and it's kind of a horrifying feeling. I think Fire Force just knows what it's doing. It feels exhilarating, but it doesn't feel like it's exciting just because it has gore or action. But rather, a majority of this episode, sure, there was a lot of flames, but there wasn't all that much action until towards the end of the episode. Most of it was focusing on a deranged character who loves seeing flames burst alive. And that was probably some of the most exciting content we've seen this season of Fire Force. 
minus all the cool action that we've seen over last week and the week before. Fire Force knows what it's doing, it's doing a great job, and it's making me love the series even more. I said it at the end of Season 1, if it continues where Season 1's final arc went, it could be an amazing series and something worthy of the author's title that he's kind of made for himself after his other hit series, and honestly, Season 2 is doing even better than I thought it could. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Manga readers, anime originals, what did you think of Inca? And do you love her as much as myself? Even though I may love her, I definitely am scared of her. Whatever you're feeling, do let me know. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like to show your support, and remember to hit that subscribe button if you're happy new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.